2. Have your Bible, turn there with me. In Philippians chapter 2. And I'm going to read, start reading in verse 1 and conclude in verse number 12. But, and then I'll come back and tell you what I want to try to get this moment, if I can keep your interest. Paul writing says, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, any fellowship of the Spirit, any bowels of mercy, Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded. Now underscore the word like-minded. Having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing, nothing in this text means nothing. Right. I got to say that again, because see, it's got to resonate with some of us. That nothing, absolutely nothing, be done through strife or vainglory. Now, how many things? Oh, nothing. What does nothing mean? means nothing. He said, but, but, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of us. Here comes the table. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of me. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. I can tell you right now, and you, you have to, there's not enough humbleness in our society. Nobody's humble anymore. Both think that by word is arrogant. The more arrogant you be, they feel the more. That's why Donald Trump cuss out everybody you run into. Yes. But made of himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and became in the likeness of man. And, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also has highly exhorted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, here it is. You see, wherefore, what is wherefore, therefore? Wherefore, my beloved brethren, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but, but now much more in my house. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, for a few minutes, we're going to try to get in here for a few minutes. Back in verse 5, 
not going to get all this this morning, but this is going to open us up to what we really need to be studying. Now, I know you need a good feel good sermon. I got it. I just don't know how you're going to receive it. Because I need one where I can jump up and down and clap. Well, you can start clapping now. I got it. But in verse 5, I want to elevate this. This is what I'm going to try to deal with for a few minutes. Paul writes, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. It's possible, church. So for a few minutes, I want to talk about the mind of Christ. Because he said, let it be in you. And what is it that the mind, what is it that when we think of the mind of Christ, what is it that we should be thinking of? Well, well Christ, if we had the mind of Christ, uh, you, you look at the circumstances and the foundation for your motivation for praise. What's our motivation for praise? We got the mind of Christ. Don't you know that everything that Christ did, he still praised his father. Even when he was, they, they led him to the cross, he said, not my will, but your will. In other words, I don't want to die, but if it's your will, I'll do it. Our motivation for serving God is hard to be the mind of Christ. I mean, our motivation for getting up this morning. What was your motivation for getting up? But what was your motivation for coming to Sunday school? See, may, maybe you're missing something. Maybe that's why you, you, you don't have the, the, the fortitude to, to move, to, to get the service in a, in a, in a, in a proper way. It's because you don't have any motivation. And some folk don't. Some folk get up and They'll tell you, you know, I got up at 6.30 this morning. They can't get to work at 9 o'clock. You don't have no motivation. You see folks like that? I stood in, you know, I got 5.30 this morning. I'm sitting around there. I'm trying to figure out what I was going to do today. Why you just stay in the bed? I mean, you got to have some motivation. What's your motivation? What was your motivation for coming this morning? Well, think about it. It, was it because you wanted or you have the mind of Christ? What, what was your motivation for singing when the song leader was singing? What's your motivation for bowing and praying when the brother prayed? What's going to be your motivation when that collection begs? Maybe that's why nothing going in the bed because nobody got no Come on, come up here and sit with me, buddy, so I can have some company. They ain't gonna say anything. But when we talk about the mind of Christ, we talk about your motivation. And, and, and don't get the mind of Christ motivates you to do it. Look at Christ. It, because of who he was, he was motivated to make sacrifices. And if you have no motivation, uh, you, you won't make sacrifices. You have no motivation. You won't serve your fellow man. You have no motivation. You don't understand loving your neighbor. You don't have any motivation for that. But Christ, but Christ, he said, we ought to have the mind of Christ. And then, when, when, when you understand the dynamics of the mind of Christ, you understand what his nature constituted. See, it, when you got the mind of Christ, your character has to change. You, you have to understand that, that serving God is not about what you get, but it's what you give. But if you don't understand that having that mind, you don't understand the concept of the nature of Christ and you go to church or to worship for what you can get rather than for what you can get. He 
he said, he said, and that just reminds me and you. I mean, Paul literally said, oh, you, you got to change. Right. I mean, you, you, you can't come into worship and think in your own heart that you can serve God at your own level. You, you got to get out of yourself. If you're going to serve God, he said, let the mind be in you. Come here, you. You, you ready to fellowship? Have wholesome fellowship. You, you, you ready to praise God? Uh, you don't have to wait and look around and see who else is praying. You already ready because the mind is ready. You don't have to worry about when the, uh, uh, the bad is telling hoping that you're out of place so you don't have to put nothing in it. You, you run to the back, you don't run from it. See, he said, let the mind be in, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. When, when you got the mind, uh, your, your, your motivation will encourage somebody else. Amen. Somebody else come broke down the service because of who you represent. Your character. It's the nature. And then, then, and then, attitude. You, you cannot have the mind to cry. That, that, that doesn't even resonate. You can't have the mind to cry and thank everybody that I can get you. You know, some folks like that. Some of us live so paranoid, we think everybody got to get us. Amen. Some folks don't even care about you, but you think that, did you see that? He turned the corner down and flashed his light. Nobody care about you. You ain't that important. You're not that important. We people not doing it. They done rode back two times. So, I ain't looking for you. Robin Hood robbed the rich and gave to the poor. You not you you don't fit the category. In fact, you leave the door open, the bird said they ain't got nothing. <laughs> they had something that locked the door. In other words, your disposition, your attitude has to change. Everybody is not gonna be like you. Christ said we ought to have to love. For our fellow. That's why he said, love your neighbor. They're not going to be like you. They're not going to act like you. They're not going to behave like you. They're not going to sing like you. But you still got love. They're not going to even dress like you. You've been to the grocery store and somebody way over on the other side. You don't even know. Got on something you don't know. I don't know why she's wearing that. That ain't nothing you've been to. They're not going to behave like you. So the mind of Christ. Now, let me develop this a minute or two. I wasn't going to say Maybe next time we'll get a threesome up. We'll say But let me develop this just a minute. I'm not going to get through all that. When we talk about this mind, talk about the mind. One thing that the mind of Christ Lacks. I'm going to have to throw this out because I need to develop this side of it. Because some folks think that if I have the mind of Christ, that makes me perfect. That's wrong. And we think that if we have the mind of Christ, then that gives me a right to judge those who are less than those who have the mind of Christ. No, no, no. Wrong. But the mind of Christ, what it what it does, and if you look at Jesus' life through the through, through the gospel, uh, what, what it does is that life it lacks selfish ambition. Christ, Christ didn't have a selfish ambition. Everything he did was for his father's pleasure. He didn't do any of it for his own day. Everything he did was for his father's will. Not for his will. And everything he 
say he did. So when you talk about that, the mind of Christ lacks selfish ambition. It's not, as I said earlier, it's not about us. It's about serving God and eliminating selfish ambition. And if you're selfish about it, you can't serve God selfishly anyway. Come on now. Too big for us. Some of us want to put him in our box. And the problem with some folk is the reason why they can't step out any further on faith because they got God in a box. You can't put God in a box. He's bigger than our mindset, our concept of what a mind is, and he's bigger than that. So we can't put him in a box. So he's bigger than our selfish. And the, and the other thing, uh, when when we think about it, he knows where, what our ability is when it comes to serving him. Uh, we miss many things because of our refusal to to accept Christ as as our Savior, but to accept the mind. Now you know the teaching under the law Jesus came. Turn your mind to Matthew chapter 5. And all, all, this is just old teaching. Every, every one of us should know this. But, but let's, let, let's look at something here that Jesus taught. And maybe we can run through this quickly. Uh, in Matthew chapter 5, uh, if you will. And when you get there, let's, let's, look, let's look at a couple of things I want to look at. Well, let's start in verse number 12. Uh, in this Jesus speaking, Talk about the mind of Christ. What did Jesus say? Rejoice. Be exceedingly Jesus glad. Said, Jesus said, Rejoice. Be exceedingly glad. And be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward. For great is your reward. For so in heaven. The prophets, he, he, said for, for you. he said, For so prosecuted they the prophets which were before. And, and, and that's just simply telling you. Uh, and I was telling somebody this morning. Uh, no matter how well you try to do well to people. Somebody's gonna always criticize. Up and up your skin. Come with the territory. Come with the territory. Go preach. He tries to do everything. But no matter what you do, folks don't complain. So he said, Rejoice. If you're doing God's will, Rejoice. That's the mind of Christ. If you trying to pick, rejoice. Don't worry about your critics. They always going to be here. Amen. Amen. If you do good, they always going to be here. Amen. I told the story uh, when I was a policeman. If I sat under the tree and didn't write tickets, they talked about me. If I got but if you do God's will, he said you can rejoice. When they start complaining, rejoice. You know, you're, you know you're doing your job. Yeah. Now, watch what he says. He are the salt of the earth. I love this. He said, ye are the salt of the earth. It's the salt has lost its savor. So, so we have the mindset over the course of time, day to day living. Well, we, we, we want to be challenged. And if even in our congregation here, even in this country, Season. Some of you folks that like salt, you know when ain't no salt on green. <laughs> and you know when too much salt on the green. Praise the Lord. It has a purpose. We have a purpose. That's why Paul said, let this mind be in you. We got a purpose. It's more than just coming together on Sunday morning and singing. That's a part of it. It's more than just coming together and, and, and being able to shake it. That's a part of it. But we got a purpose. Sweetwater community need to know about the Lord. And, and, and we can tell it, but many times our talent doesn't resonate because our lives don't resonate. But we have a purpose. Some of us want to be saints for two, two Sundays a month, and then the next two Sundays we want to do our own thing. That 
that's not the mind of Christ. He said, we are the salt. We have a purpose. Watch what he said. You are the salt of the earth, but, but if the salt has lost the savior. In other words, if salt is not, has not been the purpose, what's the need of it? Back to our text here. Philippians. And Paul, he said, in verse 1, he says, If there be any consolation of Christ, any comfort of love, any fellowship of the Spirit, any bowels of mercy, fulfill ye my joy that we be, like, in other words, be just like. Then he says, Fulfill my joy that you be like man, having the same love. Oh, is that same problem? If can we as the church have the same love? Yes, sir. He said we could. Yes. He said, and not only the same, he said, having the same love. But be on one accord. Yeah. Uh, one accord is having the same thought process. Yeah. Not renegade. Yeah. Fortunately, there are renegades. But he said, we all have the same accord. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, there's a purpose for this. When we have the mind of Christ, God's greatest blessings come through our obedience. And, 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 and we don't, we, we can't send a smoke screen and fool God. God knows what we're doing. Yeah. Amen. 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 He said, at same accord, God expects that. And a uh, one mind. What mind does it mean that everybody in here got to think about what color suit I'm going to wear? We got to help you say, hey, man, you got to wear black. Spiritually. You don't even have the same mind when it comes to when you cut the yard out there. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> we don't have the same mind when it comes to how we go cut it. <laughs> the mind I don't hear you say nothing. You don't know. <laughs> Ain't no intimidation, bro. <laughs> Speak up, man. Speak up. Amen. <laughs> same man is spirit. We're not going to have the same man when we decide what color the rug was. So every time you make a decision, you have a meeting after the meeting. <laughs> So, 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 but he said, we ought to have one man. And then once we develop that mentality, that attitude, he said, let nothing. And I mean absolutely nothing when it comes to the church. Let nothing when it comes to the church. We ought to have a closer relationship than with our blood brothers. We, we are the family of God. But we can't let inner sacredness, small things that mean nothing of, have nothing to do with our salvation, destroy our fellowship.
and the human side spoke out. And he said, Eli, Eli, my wife's about to me, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But he did not say, hmm. he said, if it be thy will, let this pass. In other words, not my will. I don't want it to happen, but if it's okay with you, yes, sir. let's go through. Thank you, Lord. Some of us, thank you, Lord. Bust a picture of hissy over here. Watch out. And that. It's, it's not about coffee. I feel dead today because you know what a Christian I'm about. And nothing to be done through strife or vain glory. You know what vain glory is? Don't do it when they do it, and you are not to it. Yeah, you don't get rid of you. That's, a, that's why he said, let nothing be done through strife. Strife is dangerous. Amen. You really can't work through strife. It restricts your ability to move forward. Strike them. souls in here that are striving to make heaven their own and we have a little strive tearing up the hand. Yeah. Yeah. Be careful. I'm trying to work my way to it but I've got to. I'll be to it in the minute. So he said, let nothing be done to strive for in glory. He said, but in loneliness, humbleness. I started out with that. Humbleness. Humbleness. In lowness of mind. When he said the mind of Christ, we have to think about it. how was Jesus mind? But you remember when they fostered him, led him out to the hall of Praetorium. Bible says that he could have called legions of angels to come down. But, 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 but Jesus, because of his lowliness, the mind of Christ, he looked out and seen individuals like us who couldn't help ourselves and stay on that cross for a rich like us. It's loneliness of mind. I'm going to look out for somebody else rather than look out for me. It's loneliness of mine. I, I, I know I have the power. I know I have the authority to press forward. But because it may harm somebody, that's what I'm not going to do. I know I have the ability to move forward without the help of me. But because I might destroy some innocent.
that we can serve each other, and not only serve each other, but serve the community. How can the community see Christ in us if we don't serve each other? Put your Bible back one, if you will. Put it in chapter, I mean, 1 Corinthians chapter 